What up y'all? So today I'm going to talk about my Botox and my fillers. If you follow me on Snapchat, if you don't, I'll like put my name over here and stuff. Follow me on Snapchat then you know this is not the first time I'm filming this and it's not the second time. Yeah girl, third time filming this. Third time's a charm, I hope. Jesus at this point um but after filming it the first time the second time was just like a memory card thing like my computer wouldn't read the memory card so it was just fucked but the first time after the first time filming it I was like I want to talk about the side that nobody talks about like almost like the side effects or the repercussions from getting Botox and fillers because I feel like on social media there's all kinds of people that talk about it on social media and believe me girl I have done my research because if you follow me on snapchat you know for months I was like super scared to get it done I kept saying I was gonna get it done but then I kept wussing out and then I finally dropped the ball and did it but the thing that made me so scared was the side effects and I will get into that here in a little bit but I feel like on social media everybody's getting it done and there's all different types of people on social media like the people that get it done and don't talk about it but they want you to think that they naturally fucking look like that when we all know they don't naturally look like that but it's just like this unspoken thing and then there's people that talk about it and completely glamorize it like oh i got botox in my forehead now i don't have lines i got filler and my laugh lines now my makeup doesn't crease and then there's the people who just have like outlandish horror stories but there's no in between I just I've watched so many videos that I feel like there's nobody out there like really just telling it how it is girl and y'all know this bitch likes to keep it real so basically I just want to tell you guys like almost like the behind the scenes like the truth about Botox and fillers that's basically like where I got my title from but there are certain aspects to it that nobody talks about and that's what we're going to talk about today so today i'm going to talk about the botox that i got the fillers that i got i'm going to show you guys before and afters and kind of talk to you guys about the side effects or the repercussions or whatever you want to call it um from me getting it because i really had to stop and think like do i like having a pack of hot dogs on my forehead or do i not like having a pack of hot dogs on my forehead and i'll tell you why here in a minute so um, I know a lot of you guys wanted to know about pricing and things like that, and I can't really attest to pricing just because, like, it's different everywhere. If you guys want to know how much I paid, I got um, Botox in my forehead, and it was $275. The doctor that I go to charges per area. Normally, it's not recommended to go to somebody that charges per area because, so with Botox, they either charge per area or they charge per unit. I don't know what a unit covers. I don't know how much a unit is. I've seen units range anywhere from $8 all the way up to $15 per unit. But the reason why you're not really supposed to go to somebody that charges per area is because, so say like you want to get your forehead done, but you don't have like a huge issue with your forehead and your doctor charges $275 for the forehead. But yet because you don't have that big of an issue, it's only going to take 20 units to like do what you want to do. So in hindsight, you're losing $75. Does that make sense? Like you're not really getting your money's worth if you're doing per area than if you're doing by the unit. But after talking to my doctor, I decided to go ahead and stay with him just because he's more on the side of naturalism rather than like being plastic fantastic. Like he just wants to make you look a little bit fresher, a little bit younger, a little bit like maybe you didn't party as hard as you did when you were 21 a little bit, maybe a little bit like that. So that is why I decided to go with the doctor that I did. I definitely suggest for you guys to get consultations before you decide to go with any doctor don't just walk up in there and do it you definitely want to do a consultation first and then another thing I wanted to touch on is because so many of you guys had so many questions that I really wanted to kind of break it down for you so the way that Botox went, and I'm gonna talk about Botox and fillers the way that Botox works is there and this is all about getting your money's worth too so the way that Botox comes is in a vial and that vial is able to be drawn off of multiple times the way that Juvederm or Juvederm is basically just the name brand for the filler BT dubs if you didn't know that so the way that Juvederm works is the Juvederm actually comes in a syringe and then they stick the needle on that syringe so basically the way that my doctor explained to me is it doesn't matter per area that syringe cannot be drawn off again so what What's in that syringe is completely yours so I would definitely suggest like especially if they're charging per area because my doctor charges per area and if you want to know I paid $5.25 for the filler like for the Juvederm syringe however on their website it says if you want your laugh lines done it's $5.25 if you want your cheeks done it's $5.25 if you want your lips done it's $5.25 um, per area 
but that's still your syringe. So if you go to a doctor that's charging like $600 to get your lips done, and maybe you don't want that much in your lips, whatever's left in that vial is yours. You paid for it, it's yours. They're not gonna be able to do anything else with it. They're not gonna be able to inject it into anybody else. They can't draw off it again. It's just gonna get thrown away. I would definitely make sure you're asking your doctor, like, what about the rest of that? Can I put it here? Can I put it there? Put it in your laugh lines, wherever. Um, so that way you're getting your money's worth. So I just wanted to touch on that and let you guys know because I feel like um, that's something that I didn't really know about, like going into it. And now I do know about it. So I know that I can really get my money's worth. As far as me, like going to a doctor that charges per area, probably not like the best decision for my money, but I do really like my doctor. So that's why I decided to stay with them even though I'm probably not getting my money's worth. All right, so now let's get into the shit that y'all really wanna know. Let's spill some tea on some injectables. So as far as the Botox goes, I'll show you guys the before and afters. Like I said, I got it in my forehead, was $275. I got a lot, girl. My forehead was like a fucking pack of hot dogs beforehand. If you go back to my older videos, there is a huge difference. And honestly, like going back to my older videos, I kind of had to laugh because it was kind of funny going back, trying to find videos where I wasn't like cutting the top of my head off because I was so insecure about my forehead lines that I did cut the top of my head off in a lot of my videos. So now I'm gonna show you the before and after. So the first picture that I have is basically like the movement that I have before and after. And before you can tell like mm, fucking whole pack of awesome iron wieners up there, girl. And then after this is the movement in the picture and then this is all I can move now. And then the second picture is just me like not making any facial expressions. It's a close up of the lines that were in my forehead. They're still there, but they're starting to dissipate now because I'm not making that movement and my skin is increasing. So those are starting to dissipate. Now, the third picture I have is something that I feel like nobody talks about, and it's the fact that the Botox did push my brow down. So I feel like nobody ever talks about the fact that if you have hooded eyes, um, and you get Botox in your forehead, it could possibly make your eyes even more hooded. And if you don't have hooded eyes to begin with, it could possibly give you hooded eyes because it's essentially, not essentially, it is paralyzing the muscle in there. So if you think about somebody that has had like a stroke or something and like the left side of their body is paralyzed, it droops. So that's basically what's happening to your forehead. It's drooping down. So if you, if they inject too low, it's going to droop down and your eyes are going to droop, which is what happened to my eyes. So this picture here is the before of what my eyes look like. And the after, I mean, you can tell such a huge difference, especially towards the center of my eyes, like where it droops down. Cause you guys, my eyes were like this before and now it's like drooping down and I am gonna be straight up. It has been a pain in the ass to try to fucking like basically relearn how to do my makeup again because my eyes are a completely different shape now. If you're somebody that has smaller eyes, I would definitely, definitely suggest like just giving it a lot more thought because it's gonna make your eyes look even smaller. Cause as you can tell from the before and after, like my eyes look smaller than they used to. So, and it may not even be something that you know, a lot of people are gonna be able to tell the difference, but I can tell the difference on myself and you know, you might be able to tell the difference on yourself. So I will give you a little tip from my research and from what my doctor told me. If you do not want it pushing your brow down, um, so here's my brow line right here. As long as the injection, injection site, as long as the injection site is an inch or more above your eyebrow line, which my doctor told me a centimeter, but I really feel like it's an inch because he went with the whole centimeter thing and it did like droop my brow down a little bit. Um, so I would just stick with an inch. As long as where he's injecting at isn't an inch or is more than an inch above your brow line, then you should be okay. But again, my doctor said a centimeter and it still like pushed mine down. And I made real sure that I was very adamant about that when I went to the appointment, like, dude, I don't want to have mammoth brow. Like, I don't want my brow being pushed down. I already have hooded eyes. I don't want them to be any more hooded. Um, so we did that. Then, because he was so selective about the fact that, you know, I didn't want my brow being pushed down. He was very selective about where the injection was. Um, this brow for probably two weeks was like clear the fuck up here because I had a line over here 
that or was it over here the line over here was lower down than the line over here so um i ended up going back and having him do like a couple more injections just to like make physically make this brow droop a little bit lower because girl it was like this like i'm not even kidding it was like this so i just want you guys to be aware of that like i don't i feel like nobody talks about that nobody talks about the side effects nobody talks about the fact that yes it can push your brow down and if you don't have hooded eyes, it could make you have hooded eyes. And then you have to learn how to do your makeup again, just like I did. And I'll be real honest, I'm probably not going to wear a winged liner. I've, I haven't even tried to do winged liner on my eyes yet because I'm a little bit scared that it's not going to work out. And I'm never going to be able to wear a winged liner again. But even though with all that being said, it's totally worth it to me because I was so fucking self-conscious about my forehead, about the lines in my forehead. Like I found myself staring at everybody's forehead to see if they had lines in their forehead too. And it, it was just crazy. I was very insecure about it. Okay. So, um, those are kind of like the downsides as far as like the Botox goes when it comes to the filler. So I got filler in my laugh lines and I got a very small amount under my eyes. My doctor only uses Juvederm as a filler and he told me that he did not feel comfortable putting Juvederm under my eyes because it's a very thick, dense filler and it can actually um, make your under eyes bubble up because it is such a dense filler. He did inject here and here and put a very small amount in. I'll show you guys before and after of that so this is the before and after of um my before like i was smiling and this is what my under eyes look like before and then this is what the bottom is what they look like after and the reason why i bring this up is because there are doctors out there which my doctor even told me there are doctors out there that will put juvederm under your eyes and it'll bag up like you basically have bags under your eyes that's what it'll look like they do have something that they can inject in there to dissipate it if you're not happy with it but i'm pretty sure they charge you so they could in turn fuck it up and then turn around and charge you for it do you know what i mean so i just make sure you're not letting any doctor put juvederm under your eyes if he is you really want to talk about like the placement and where he's injecting it at because it can make your eyes bubble up um as far as the laugh line filler goes um i feel like nobody talks about the fact that filler in your laugh lines can give you the appearance of weight gain. So a lot of people nowadays get filler in their laugh lines to alleviate makeup creasing there, especially people who are like bloggers and vloggers and you know, like beauty gurus and everything else. Um, but it can give you the appearance of weight gain. It can make your face look a lot fuller, which you know, in hindsight, a fuller face is more like youthful looking. And that's why a lot of people like it, but it can make your face look full to the point where you're gonna look like you gain weight. And I will spill a little bit of tea. I'm not gonna name names or call anybody out, but there is a certain influencer, I'll say, that has had a lot of filler in their face and they've actually been, I don't wanna say like accused, but a lot of people are saying that they've gained weight when in all actuality, they haven't gained any weight at all. It's because they have so much filler in their face. It's making their face look chubby and making it look like they've gained weight. So. Um, you just need to be aware of that. Talk to your doctor about it, especially when you go to the consultation. Just talk to him about the fact that is it going to like blow my face up? And I talked to my doctor about that, which is why I still like when I smile, I still have creases. Um, when my face is like at a standstill, there's still creases because I didn't want it to blow up. Do you know what I mean? Like I didn't want my cheeks to be any puffier than they are. So I'll show you the before and after. This picture is the before and after of me making the exact same facial expression. And you can see like in the after picture, just how puffy my cheeks actually look. And in this picture, like my face is a little bit swelled up from the injections, but that is just how it looked like directly after. It did go down a little bit, thankfully, because I was like, oh my God, I look like fucking shit my cheeks. Um, but as it is now, I'm super satisfied with it. And I do really, really like you know, the outcome of it now and the way that it looks now because I had a huge problem with my makeup creasing there as well, not just in my forehead. Like, it, it was really bad, you guys. Like, I would literally take my forehead and like pull back, I would take my hair and pull back, go in with my beauty blender, and then as soon as I was done with my beauty blender, I'd throw my beauty blender down and grab some powder and powder it as soon as possible while still stretching the skin and my makeup would still 
crease in my forehead and still settle in there because those lines were so freaking deep. So those are just kind of some of the drawbacks to getting Botox and fillers and I really wanted to make sure to get that out because again I feel like I keep repeating myself but I feel like nobody is fucking talking about this. Um, as far as longevity goes because I know a lot of you guys had snapped me and were curious it's going to be dependent on your body. So if you are somebody that say you get Botox, you and your friend go get Botox, and you notice that you have more movement in two months and your friend has none in two months. It just depends on how your body breaks down the Botox. Um, I've seen people go like four or five months before having to get it again, and I've seen people have to go like every two to three months to get it again. My doctor told me I got mine, um, I think it was the beginning of September, the end of August, and he said probably around Christmas time is when I'll have to come back and do it again. And I have decided that, and it's taken me a couple of weeks to decide this too, y'all. I have decided that I am going to go ahead and continue getting it because at first I was like, oh my God, I don't like the way that it's like pushing my brow down, which is why I didn't wear a lot of makeup today, just so you guys could see. Oh, because another thing is, do you see like this crease in my eye right here? I don't know if you guys can see it or not. This crease in my eye is always there now. Like I, because you know when you close your eyes and you like try to stretch your eyelid out? Well, to do that, you have to raise your eyebrows up and I can't do that. So I've always got now, which I didn't before, I always have this crease right here and I cannot put eyeshadow, like any kind of shimmery shadow above that little crease or it creases really, really bad and it just looks like shit. So before where I was able to kind of put shadow like you know, like shimmery shadow all the way up to here, I'm only able to put it on this tiny little section of my eye now. But that's just a sacrifice that I've decided I'm willing to make um, in order to have a smooth forehead. I know it sounds fucking vain, but it's true. It's something I was, I was way more insecure about my forehead than I was about, you know, this fucking crease in my eye. The final and last thing that I wanted to touch on, and this is probably gonna sound super cunty, but if you cannot afford Botox, just don't get it because if you're somebody that has to scrimp and save and you know pinch pennies to get it I would not even bother getting it because at the end of the day it's something that you're gonna have to get over and over and over again if you can't necessarily afford it when you get it the first time and you fall in love with the results you're gonna be like stressing yourself out trying to find money to get it again so I would say until you're financially stable enough to afford it, you know, the re-ups and afford the initial injection and afford the re-up injections, I wouldn't even worry about it. Um, I honestly, I'll be straight up with you guys, I have wanted Botox in my forehead since I was like in my early 20s, but I was not able to afford it. So I waited until I was financially stable enough to um, be able to afford it every other month. I know I told you guys that I've been like saving for it, but that was just like, a complex thing that I had like spending that much money on myself on something that wasn't like a physical object but I had to talk with him and he's totally cool with it now so it's all good but if you cannot afford it I would not bother or if you're somebody that does have to save for it like maybe make some kind of an account for it and put money in that every month like don't strap yourself to get Botox because it is not worth it girl there's always Photoshop you know what I'm saying so anyways I think I touched on everything that I wanted to touch on if you guys have any questions or anything like that or there was something that I missed let me know down below also let me know if you guys want a story time on it because the story time is actually pretty fucking funny it involves a Chinese screen and a caboodle so if you want to hear about that do let me know in the comments or you can just say what's up in the comments because I love talking to you guys in the comments all y'all newbies around here my old crew can tell you guys I always talk to you guys in the comments I love talking to you in the comments or snapchat you can always follow me on snapchat I love being on snapchat I basically use snapchat to vlog with I'm on there pretty much every day I do a lot of ranting and spilling of tea and gossip and things like that on snapchat snapchat on snapchat so definitely join the snap fam because we have tons of fun there on snapchat yeah anyways okay so i think that's all i wanted to say so i'm gonna go so thank you guys so much for watching like and subscribe if you're not follow me on all my social media here and i will catch you guys in my next one peace